Today in the news, we got the 6600 XT, AMD's vulnerability, and at some point I say USDT. What's up guys, I'm Snows, and this is your boot sequence. The 6600 XT officially launched. And well, it's a great GPU for 1080p gaming. It's just that AMD took advantage of this situation that we're in, you know, the whole uh, shortage plus pandemic, to basically price it above what it's worth. Don't get me wrong, Nvidia is also guilty of that, just a little bit less. And that's, of course, without talking about the actual prices that they're being sold at online. The only model that I saw available online had a 30 plus percent markup on the suggested price at launch. And I was there at release time. Anyways, it's bad. But at least thanks to its smaller die size and uh, some of the um, quote unquote sacrifices that AMD is making, we should see more stock, right? Wrong. According to testing that has been done on the 6600 XT, it's actually one of the most efficient mining cards around. Yep, that means that it's going to be one of the most sought after cards for the next couple of months, heck, probably year. Now, you might be wondering why this GPU would be good at mining. Well, it's because it can manage to push out about 32 mega hashes at 55 watts on the core when tuned properly. Taking the rest of the board into account, it's around 70 to 75 watts. That's a little over two watts per mega hash. Compare that to let's say a 3090, which has the highest hash rate in the consumer market right now, and that card consumes around 2.8 watts per mega hash. So if electricity cost is more important than actual real estate, you can bet that miners will look at the 6600 XT just like they looked at the 5700 XT when it came out. Seriously though, this whole market is kind of messed up. It's almost like there's no point in buying new GPUs and that only select older ones are not price gouged. Also, in AMD news, it looks like their CPUs are slightly less secure than we thought. Researchers over at Cornell University found a proof of concept exploit that could give hackers full access to a system and its virtual machines. Ironically, this vulnerability uses a voltage glitch attack that basically would rewrite the firmware of AMD's SEV. It's ironic because that's the secure encrypted virtualization feature from AMD. So basically the security feature enables decryption and access to your system and uh, all the virtual machines attached to it. The vulnerability is compatible with Zen 1 all the way up to Zen 3, but thankfully it's a um, physical attack. So basically the hacker needs to have access to the device. Next up, it looks like the brown and tan giant is getting dethroned. That's right, Noctua has some competition and its name is Fantex. So Noctua's current best fan is this one, the NF-A12X25, and it's been the best fan for a long time. Well, Fantex just released the T30, and according to reviews out right now, it provides more airflow at the same noise level. The thing is, Fantex is kind of cheating though. The Fantex fan is five millimeters thicker, allowing them of course to have bigger and thicker fan blades. So I guess that the tan and brown is still technically number one in its own category. By the way, have you heard about the GPU that Asus and Noctua are actually apparently working on? Well, I've seen this picture floating around and wow, that's ugly. Of course, that's just a concept, basically fan art. But remember, this isn't the first time that uh, the two collabed on a project. The Ryujin AIO from Asus also uses Noctua fans, so don't expect some tan and brown fan shrouds on a GPU. It probably won't look like that. Next up, we got the free game check. It's Thursday, so we got some brand new ones for you. For the next seven days on the Epic Store, you can get Rebel Galaxy for free. Now it's an old game from 2015, but to be honest, it's pretty good. I watched a couple of reviews and it seems like you could have a lot of fun. If that's not your cup of tea though, just wait for the next week. There's the infamous ukulele coming for free. I know it's not the best game, but I did buy it personally when it came out and I played through the whole thing and uh, yeah, there's also Void Bastard coming out, a first person shooter that actually needs strategy. It's not just a, you know, click head and you're dead. That's what I'm definitely excited for. 
And lastly, in the news, it looks like crypto is secure? I mean, I'm not sure what to make of this story and how I feel about it, but a couple of days ago, the Poly Network, which is basically a decentralized finance platform, or DeFi, got hacked. And it got hacked good, with the culprit having taken $600 million worth of crypto. Now, the hacker did start to mess around with the money by converting it into USDT or USD Tether, but maybe he got scared or something because he returned pretty much the entire amount of money to the Poly Network. There's a whole Q&A on Twitter with the hacker basically talking to himself and uh, the Q&A was done through the Ethereum network, which is pretty interesting. So go check it out if you're interested. Personally, I just don't know how to look at this story in terms of both security and crypto. Did he return the money because all of these privately controlled cryptos could blacklist a specific address or was he just scared? Let me know what you guys think down below. Anyways, guys, that's pretty much it for the catch up. Hopefully you've enjoyed. Drop a like if you liked it, a comment if you want to talk about my voice going out. As usual, you can click right here to see the latest video right here to subscribe to the channel. Stay frosty, my dudes, and I'll see you on the next one. Take care.